The Psalms are prayers and hymns of the Bible par excellence. Uttered in praise, joy, sorrow, and despair, spoken or sung in private and in public. By lay people, kings, poets, and priests, coming from both the righteous and repentant sinners, the Psalms have served as the prayer book and the hymn book. To generations of believers, for every man on every occasion can find in its Psalms. Be not dismayed, whate'er be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Good morning to everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Adult Lesson Review. We're here today, January 22nd, to discuss lesson number four entitled, The Lord Hears and Delivers. And here with me this morning are our usual Monday guest, Elder Stacy Maskell and Elder Vaughn Joseph. Welcome to Whispering Hope, gentlemen and gentle lady. I pray that you had a blessed week and that, you know, as we are preparing for this lesson study, that the Holy Spirit will fill both of you afresh so that we can discuss it and edify God's people. Welcome, Vaughn, and welcome, Stacey. Good morning. Thank you, Sister Annie. Glad to be here as usual. It's always a privilege to be on Whispering Hope to look into the Word of God. I pray that today that will be nonetheless a very exciting and in-depth study that we go through. Hello, uh, Sister Stacy, and to all of our viewing audience out there in Whispering Hope. Good morning to everybody. Yes, and good morning, good morning Sister Anik, Elder Vaughn. It's indeed a privilege that God has woke us up this morning to be on this platform. I just want to greet the folks. It's great studying with you as usual, and I pray God may bless us as we proceed as we look at his word. Morning. Amen, amen. Stacey, I'm going to ask you to look at our topic, The Lord Hears and Delivers. And contextualize it for us so that as we continue in the study, we can better be able to situate the lesson. The Lord deliver, hears and delivers. Well, Sister Annie, this particular topic is very encouraging. You know, it is not saying that the Lord hears and may deliver. It is saying that he delivers and that we can praise God for. Because, you know, as Christians, we are supposed to know that God has our very best interests at heart. And whatever we, we may ask of him... He, he always come through. He may not come through the way we think that he, we want him to come through, but he always come through. And I don't know, um, Sister Anik, if ever you have ever had an experience whereby you did, you prayed for something, it didn't happen. But then after a couple of months, weeks, maybe years, you understand and could celebrate the fact that God didn't allow it to happen. And so always rest assured that we have a God that hears and he will always deliver. And so as we look at this week, I'm sure reflected in our conversation will be that particular, that confirmation that he hears and delivers. Amen. Amen. That's such a wonderful promise, especially to those of us who, you know, occasionally go through our feelings of, you know, despair and discouragement because we're living in trying times and it is okay for us to show a human side, but we need to remember and to be grounded. So I'm going to ask Elder Vaughan to pray for us at this time as we Invite God's presence into our midst as we look forward to studying. And then, Elder Stacey, read for us our memory text for this week. And again, give us any insights that you may see fit for this week's lesson study. All right. Good morning once again. Let us just have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for being able to be a part of your great work of winning souls to the kingdom of God. We are grateful for being co-laborers and we are appreciative of the fact that you are with us even now on Whispering Hope to discuss this lesson. Lord, may we rightfully represent you. May our minds and our thoughts be focused upon heaven and upon all those who will hear and view their Lord. May we give the truth, may we represent Christ aright. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit will indeed come divinely close to us even now and to all of our viewers and bless our hearts as we open your word once again to study this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in our text this morning, it's taken from Psalms 34, verse 17, in the New King James Version. It reads, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Have mercy, Sister Annie. You know, this is so important. If you notice who is crying out, it's not just saying man cries out but the righteous cries out. And we will always be in a situation, Sister Annie, where circumstances that we are faced in life, we must feel uncomfortable as God's children. In this world, the sin-cursed earth, we will not 
feel at ease. If ever we get comfortable, Elder Vaughan, something is wrong. You know, the enemy is not going to allow us to sit steady and enjoy life. You know, it's just the goodness and protection of God. And because we know this, we can agree with the psalmist when he says the righteous cry out. Sometimes the pains are, you know, the frustration, the circumstance, the burden of life presses down. And sometimes we cry out as God's children. But this particular study this week, Sister Annika, as we go through day after day, we are going to find out how God is good, how he's gracious. And, you know, he has told us to come and lay our burdens down and take on his, his yoke because it is light. And so this is what the psalmist is saying, that he hears. And that not he only hears, but he delivers them out of all their trouble. All their trouble, their elder Vaughan, all, not some, all. So rest assured that we have a God who hears and he is proactive. He's active because he not only hears, but he gets involved and he delivers us. And we can celebrate that. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Elder Stacey. And so as we continue with our lesson, you know, it's such, such a wonderful feeling and a blessing to know that God doesn't stay far away from us. As a matter of fact, you know, he says to us that we are to keep everything before him. We can't burden God. You know, sometimes you might have an issue and you call your best friend and, you know, you wonder the next time you have an issue if she's tired of you or he's tired of you. That is not the God that we serve. And so all of us can, can, can have joy and a sense of reassurance that we serve a God who cares about every single detail of our lives. And this today, as we study the assurance of God's care, we really need to look to God's promise and trust and have faith in his word. I want to ask Elder Vaughan at this time to read Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 to 3. And then Elder Stacey, I'm going to ask you to read Psalm 50, verse 15. And then I will read Psalm 55, verse 22. And I will also read, well, I'll ask Elder Vaughan and Elder Stacey to both read Psalm 121. We're going to cut Psalm 121 in half just so that it can we can go through a little quicker. So I'm going to ask Elder Stacey to read 1 to 4 and Elder Vaughan to read 5 to 8. All right. And then I'm going to ask the question, how is God involved in our daily affairs as seen or evidenced in these Psalms? Again, Elder Vaughan, Psalm 40, 1 to 3. Elder Stacey, Psalm 50, uh, verse 15. I will read Psalm 55, 22. And then Elder Vaughan, you will read Psalm 121, verses 5 to 8, and Elder Stacy verses 1 to 4. All right, so I'll begin with Psalm 40, verses 1 to 3. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And so we're looking at Psalms chapter 50, verse 15 from the King James Version. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. And Psalm 55, verse 22 reads, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And Psalms 121, um, the King James Version again, verses 1 to 4. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. The question is, how is God involved in our daily affairs? Elder Vaughan and then Elder Stacy. Clearly, God is very much involved in our daily affairs. Not to the extreme where there's a school of thoughts. Actually, there may be even a philosophy on this about how God operates. Some school of thought say that God has set the world in motion and he has left us all here to deal with circumstances and challenges that we have to work it out. Others say that every single minute 
thing that we do in our daily lives, every single thing that we do, God has control of it. In other words, he dictates exactly what happens. And so the question is, asked, how is God involved in our daily lives? God is not having us like puppets on a string. He's not the great uh, God up there with, you know, these, these strings on us and he's dangling us here, there and everywhere and push us there and everywhere. That is not the way it is. But from the Psalms that we see here, Psalm 40, 1 to 3 and the 121st Psalm, etc., we can see that the Psalmist is saying, look, look, he called out to God and God answers him. He waited patiently and he responded. And we see where in, in Psalm 55, 23 says, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall su never suffer the righteous to be moved. So, in essence, uh, Sister Anik, that God is very much present in our daily lives, present to the point that we can speak, we can ask, we can make requests, we can praise his name, we can uh, lift him up in song, we can talk to him as a friend, and he hears and he answers. And so whatever we are going through, whatever challenges we have, whatever praise we want to give God, whatever high points that we're on or low points that we're in, God is very present. That listening ear, that friend, let's take it closer than a brother so that we can talk with him. We can have a listening ear if we just want to, to vent. We can have someone who will do something for us, who can um, answer our prayers, who can, who, can, who can respond in a particular way. And so God is very present, just as how you are present, Sister um, Stacy is present, Elder Joy is present. God is present, but even more closer than that, because he is God after all. And so for me, God is present all the time in our lives. It's, a matter, it's, it's just a matter of how we relate to him. That makes a difference. Amen. Yeah. Elder Stacy. Well, Sister Anik, I just, Elder Vaughn did a terrific job with the explanation. I just want to offer a testimony to wrap up this particular question. I'm hoping I, I did not share this testimony already, Elder Vaughn, but it is something that keeps coming at me as to how, you know, ever present God is. We might think that we need a big thing to God for God to come in and do it for us to know that God is there. But the simple little things, if we just consider that God cares so much about us that the little simple things really matters to him and he comes and delivers for those. I remember traveling recently and they lost my luggage, Sister Anik. And what I usually do, I usually travel with water in my baggage, at least my carry-on. I usually buy a few bottles of water because I don't know if I'll get a chance to go to a supermarket or whatever the case is. And they lost my luggage and there I am fretting. I had my toothpaste, everything, my carry-on and I'm there saying, Look, they lost that now, so what am I going to do? And I was traveling with the children, and of course, I thought that they had put their stuff in the bag and everything. So I was there flaring. And I failed to recognize that God tell us, you know, to trust him. At those points, we ears Christian Elder Vaughan, you know. And when I a person collected me to take me to the apartment, I, I, I had a... Um, reserve an apartment never met the person before but she came to pick me up and i did fretting over the fact i don't have water or, or don't have my stuff that i need and lo and behold when i turned up at the apartment there was a little basket there with toothpaste in it you name it soap everything in it and sister anik and in addition to that the lady turned to me and said to me i left three bottles of water on the refrigerator never did it before but i just thought that i was inspired to do it and sister anik three bottles is three of us and, and when I think of how God is, and when I opened my carry-on, there is all the things that I needed for that stay. I didn't need anything out of my suitcase, Sister Annie, the one that was lost. But God was really there, and he, I, I'm sure God just chuckled at me when I was complaining. And that is how intimate he is in terms of our, our fears, Sister Annie. He looks out for us, and he delivers, and he comes through. So why worry when you can't pray, Sister Annie? That's all I have to say. Amen. And, and that seems to be a cliche statement, but it's really true. Why should we worry when we can pray to a God who is available to hear us? Now, you know, as we continue, it says, we look at how God is involved in our daily affairs. What should really be our response? I mean, we know God exists. And sometimes, you know, we go about our business acting as if, you know, God is not present. You know, sometimes when I have difficulties, I don't always, my mind doesn't always go to God. And I'm, I'm training myself for my response to be, look to God first. You know, it's sometimes in the middle of it, I'm like, Anik, why are you worrying? Sit and pray. And if you need some encouragement, call someone to pray with you. You know, but sometimes I will just go and figure out, okay, let me see what I can do. No. The question is, as you look now at how God is involved in our daily affairs, 
what should our response really be, Elder Vaughn and then Elder Stacy? You know, the question you ask is, how should I put it? it? It's asking what should we do? So I'll answer the question accordingly. But what we actually do is something different. What we should be doing is praising God and living in a state of understanding and believing that God is very much close to me. And God has conquered everything. God is victorious. God is supreme. There is none like him. He is over all. No one can match God's power. Many, many, many years ago, when I was uh, yet have found the Lord, I used to, you know, be in the world and I used to listen to all these different worldly songs and so on and so forth and certain cliches and certain sayings. One of the popular ones was that nobody can test. Can't test. It can't test God. I mean, they just can't stand up to him. You know, he's God. He has all power. And so when we, on a daily basis, how we should respond is that knowing that God is victorious, knowing that God is sovereign, we should rejoice. We should praise the name of the Lord every day. We should know that, look, infinite power is at our right hand and we cannot fail. And so that's how we should respond because God has done it all. He has died for our sins. He has gone on a cross. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And we have salvation. We have eternal life. Eternal life begins now when you accept Christ, you know? And so that is what we should do. But unfortunately, uh, it isn't always like that because that will kind of nature which we feed, that practice which we do from time to time and over and over again and repetitively, the practice of not trusting God or the practice of having doubts in God or the practice of being uncertain about where God is or if he's going to come through or what has he said. You're not too sure in his word. You don't trust his word. That then puts quite a damper on how we should react, how we should respond, how we should live our lives to cope with Christ. And so it behooves all of us to understand that God is real, God is true, trust him at his word, and as you continue to live and see the experiences that God has brought you to, your faith will grow. But if you continue to practice, it's just like anything else in the world, and if you practice to do something over and over again, you become good at it, become second nature. So we need to practice in trusting God, rather than practice in having doubts about him. Because that is going to lead down to the road of perdition, and we're going to be lost. Amen, amen. Elder Stacey, what about you? What should our response be? What should your response be? Yeah, that's an excellent submission from Elder Vaughn. No one can test God. And, you mm -hmm. know, the practical stuff, even though we know that God is in control and he is going to deliver, you know, we're asked to call upon him. That's a verb, Sister Annie, calling upon him. We're asked to praise him when he, when, even before he comes through for us, Sister Annie, we're preempting. And so we, we, we praise him according to what Elder Vaughn would have said. We would make requests, Sister Annie. So he's not just standing up. He's allowing us to be a part of the conversation. Very often when you have one-sided relationship, it's not sweet, Sister Annie. It's not sweet. It, it, you feel better when you know you have a part partnership and that includes one uh, both person corresponding so even though it is already there that god will deliver sister annie he wants us to be a part of the equation and so he encourages us to do practical things we are to call upon him, make the request, cast our cares upon him, Sister Anik. These are things that we can do from our end and he will do the rest. Amen. Amen. And you know, even as I look at Psalm 121 verse 2, it says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I mean, God came through over and over for the Israelites, even in their disobedience, even in their rebellion. God still remained faithful. And we know that God is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. So we too can trust the God of yesterday, Abraham's God of the Israelites, because he's the same God who's yearning for a relationship with us. So all of us who are here on Whispering Hope, we are just encouraging you here this morning to just trust in God. We can trust in his loving care because God loves us. Even when, you know, the enemy may try to tempt us to think that, you know what, you know, we are awful and we are separated from God. God reminds us that he loves us still. And he says to us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin and to cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness. So God says to us, keep coming. Come to me, cast your cares upon me. Come, man, no matter what you do, Tom, Susie, Harry, and Dick, come to me and I will forgive you and embrace you as if you have sinned, never sinned before. And that is the God that we can rely upon and put our trust in. All right, so let's move on. And we're going to now go to our next question, Elder Vaughn. What are some of the practical ways that we can better experience the reality of God's care? Give us a practical some practical advice here. All right, you know, it's always important for us to take from the theoretical 
or the words printed on leaves or pages of a book. I guess not so much to the printed on books, but maybe on your electronic device. So we got to lift those words out of the Bible. We got to take those promises out of the word of God and make them practical in our lives. When I say make them, I mean apply them to our lives. And so to experience God's care, I mean, God gave and exemplified how he exhibited sympathy and uh, empathy on those folks who, you know, were thronging him, the, the crowds. And, and Paul talks about pure religion and undefiled is to look after the widow and the homeless and so on. And so we have the great opportunity where we can, we can extend that arm of Christ into our community, into those who uh, live among us, into those who are in the household of faith even. And we can see how God, by us working with him through those mediums, that his grace and his love can be extended towards those persons and through us as well. I mean, we always talk about getting up every day and going to work and giving God thanks for how he has led us and so on and so forth. But sometimes when we choose words or emotions that exhibit fear or doubt in Christ, you know, when you come to the realization, you think about it and you say, what I said or what I did or what I failed to do, it was wrong. God, you are right. And you humble yourself and go before God. And so the thing is, even though at times, God forbid, that we would say words that are offensive to God or would totally mischaracterize God in front of friends or co-workers or whoever, maybe they get on bad or behave terrible in the supermarket or at the cashier or at the checkout or somewhere, even on the bus, and you misrepresent God, God's grace is still covering that once you come back to him. God's grace is going to always be there once we humble ourselves and come back to him. And so some practical ways in which we can see the mercies of God and the grace of God apply to our lives, just a few. And I believe that there are quite a host of others that Elder Stacy could bring into play right now as she continues to answer this question. Okay, Elder, you know, for the past couple of days, because we are now in the season of 10 days of prayers and there's some practical things that are just coming out of those sessions, Elder Vaughan, you know, that we are supposed to not be too busy. You know, sometimes we're too busy to realize that God is involved in our fears and to give him the praise and the glory that somebody else can see us glorifying him and lift him up as well. And we speak about having to wait upon the Lord. That is something that we do, Sister Anik. So we wait upon the Lord. He asks us to stand still and see his glory. That in itself we're witnessing. What else we can do, um, Elder Vaughn? We can persevere. You know, this week I'm learning about spiritual grit. You know, holding on no matter what. Do not compromise with the fears of this world. So these are some examples that we can do within our little corner to light our little corner to showcase what God can do for us and what he has been doing for us and what we in this relationship can contribute, Sister Annie. Amen, amen. And I have two of my own, which include having a prayer journal. If we can document some of the requests or some of the things that we would have prayed to God about. And then, you know, we have written down next to that prayer, maybe when God would have answered the prayer or given us some sort of revelation as it relates to the prayer. You know, it will give us a sense of confidence now that, hey, this is how God moved at this particular time. And then it may encourage us as we go forward in our Christian walk that God did this for me then. And it can strengthen our faith in him that he will do it again. So a prayer journal as well is a, an excellent way for us to you know, keep track of God's goodness. Because sometimes we can forget. We're human. We forget. God doesn't forget. So we can actually have a prayer journal. And to having a prayer partner. I found when I asked a particular friend of mine to be my prayer partner, um, it also was another practical way for me to sometimes remember God's care. Because sometimes when we're going through the motions and going through situations, you know, we don't always think clearly. And so when you have somebody who is spiritually strong and also, you know, can encourage you and remind you of God's promises, that can be a means as well to you remembering and experiencing God's care in your life and in their life. Because when you hear a person's testimony, that is a means and another means for it to strengthen you and your Christian faith. So we can also utilize prayer journals and again, a prayer partner. Each of us should have at least one prayer partner with whom we can share. And, you know, we can ask them to intercede on our behalves as well. So, you know, as we move on, Elder Vaughn, how can we better cooperate with God in order to enable him to work within us and for us? How can we better cooperate with God? What do we have to do? Well, that would suggest to me, the question would suggest to me that we are already cooperating with God, but we're just looking for a higher plane, a solid ground, or a more firm foundation to stand upon. 
one of the practical ways in which we can do that is to spend more time with God. It sounds cliche, but you know what? I've found that even in my own walk, that the more time I spend with God in, 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 in fervent prayer, in contemplating of his goodness and praising his name, rather than, you know, spending time doing other things which may be important in life, but you can always manage your time better and spend more time with God. More time in prayer, more time in study, more time in contemplation. Sometimes just sitting alone quietly and letting the goodness of God permeate your thoughts and just to smile on your face and think about how good God is. And so in order to cooperate with God better than how we are now, although we would have accepted him as Lord and Savior and we are walking with Christ, there's always that greater level in which we can go, that, that deeper depth in which we can go. Spend more adequate time. Share your beliefs. Share your, not just share your beliefs, but share Christ with someone. You know, the more we share Christ with, with either friends or co-workers or family members, is the closer we get drawn to him. And the thing is, you know, the closer we are with God, the more we would be inclined to understand when we are prompted to do something for him. Because the voice of God that speaks to us because of the relationship that we have, it becomes clearer and clearer as we get to know him better and better. So sometimes you may have a fleeting thought. You may think it's a fleeting thought and you're not too sure where that thought is coming from. Should I do this? Should I go out and give out some food baths? Should I call this person on the phone? Should I go to the hospital? Should I do this? Etc. Sometimes we're unsure because perhaps our connection with God is not that strong. And so to get it deeper and to get it stronger, spend more time with God. Spend more time in His Word. Spend more time talking with Him. Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time telling others of the goodness of Christ. Be a witness for Him. And so by doing so, as one pastor said, the more we give away our belief in Christ, the more we get grounded in, in, in what we believe. And so I'm a firm believer that the more we share the gospel, the stronger and more rooted it gets us in Christ. And that's one way of, you know, experiencing a greater closeness with God as we continue on this Christian walk. Amen, amen. amen. Elder St. Amen. And I think Elder Vaughn would have hit the nail on the head with that. I do believe that I, I have adopted a phrase, Sister Annie, that is very dear to me. Let our test becomes our testimony. Very often, the enemy tends to throw a lot of things at us and we fall to under the weight of the enemy. If we stand and allow God to really showcase that victory in us so that others out there can see how wonderful and how great God is, it goes a long way. So I, I really concur with Elder Vaughn as he shares, as he says, we must be witnesses. And that is tremendous because he says, if we lift up his name, Sister Anik, it will draw men onto him so that they can glorify him. So that is one of the major corporations we can have with God. Amen, amen. And Elder Stacey, while you're on the floor, give me what, tell me what's your takeaway for this week's lesson and then Elder Vaughn as we wrap up. Sister Anik, Psalms 121 is a very special Psalms to me. It's one of the Psalms that we would have memorized, you know, in our early years as, as, as um, students in school and so it's very dear to me but as i look upon it as how the author laid it out here this morning i see you know it, i can't help to think about god as how my mother would have been a caregiver to me you know when we are when we are new mother sister annie nobody dear come next to our babies you know we guard that baby we protect that baby we stand in the gap for that baby you know, when you have protective fathers, I used to have a grandfather that when we were little, nobody could come and touch us, you know, and, and you're seeing that God is there hovering around us, protecting us. So even though, it, suppose that protection wasn't there, Sister Annick, imagine if we were just um, exposed to all the wiles of the enemy, how we would be so battered and even bruised and destroyed. And the enemy wants to destroy us, but we have a shield in Jesus' name. And so... I want to encourage us, if you haven't read Monday's lesson, to really go through and appreciate Psalms 121 with what the psalmist has portrayed God as our assurance of God's, uh, and caregiver, I would want to say, to add to that caption, assurance of God's care, which is paramount to our protection. I think Sister Stacey has given, given the takeaway for me as well. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, the lesson is it's quite clear. It's talking about the assurance of God, the assurance of God's grace, of God's care. And uh, my takeaway would be that, listen, we talk about, in my profession, we talk about assurance of an internal auditor who gives the assurance of, of, of the work that is going on within the, the company. And we talk about external auditors who also give assurance. But the thing is, the assurance of God surpasses all of that. And so he cares about us infinitely. And so my takeaways for everybody today is that just recognize that God's assurance is infinite. It is there for all of us. You can have and receive God's care. You can be confident 
of God's care. And so there's no need to vacillate or to think otherwise. Just trust in God because he has given us more than abundant evidence that he is present and he's there for all of us. That's my takeaway for today. And while we go, just a reminder to those who are tuning into, into the Bible verse coming up next, we'll be talking about that final message that we all need to give. Some people wilt and shy away from giving the message. But hey, in these last days, we have got to give the three angels message to this dying world. Thank you so much for those who continue to support Into the Bible Race. Amen, okay. amen. What a wonderful and profound study this morning. And you know, my takeaway for today's lesson entitled Assurance of God's Care resonates with Sister White in her writing Steps to Christ, page 99 to 100, which says, He who numbers the hairs of your head is not indifferent to the wants of his children. His heart of love is touched by our sorrows and even by our utterances of them. He who holds up worlds, he rules over all the affairs of the universe. And that includes both you and me. Whispering Hope, it has been a pleasure and a blessing to be here with you again another day. Today, Monday, January 22nd, we pray that you have been edified, you have been blessed, and that whatever you may be experiencing this morning, we encourage you to give it to God and rest assured in his peace that he is going to take care of you. Happy Monday, everyone. Thank you to Elder Vaughn and Elder Stacy, And we pray that you will continue to study with us. Continue to like this video. Encourage persons to study with us as well. So we encourage you to share it and to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you tomorrow. Same place, same time as we study tomorrow's lesson entitled, The Lord is a Refuge in Adversity. Happy Monday, everyone. And God bless you.